how when you know that your brother, uh, most of the time, he spends his days outside. He's a very social person. And he doesn't like being cooped up inside of a house like you do. He's always out helping. He's always out talking. He's always at the pubs. He's always trying to do small jobs for people around town. But you know around this time of day, that he's usually having lunch at the pub. Usually he doesn't go to the Botanican. Usually he goes to the Blue Bell, which is... Uh, was a pub, but since they got a new owner, it's, it's a bit different. Probably one of the places in Hawking that's received the most attention throughout the year. Uh, Gareth Johnson is the current owner of the Blue Bell. And he has a daughter who is the co-owner of the Blue Bell. And she's the one that has been... Um, revamping it completely. It, it looks like a weird addition to a town like Hawken that pretty much hasn't developed in the last many many years when it comes to its facades. Yeah, so that's where you know he usually is around this time. Well, I'm not wild about confronting him in public. I will convey this information to Burn. Uh, but on the walk over there, uh, I'm going to confess, I, I don't know really how to approach these kind of conversations. I've never had to uh, <laughs> shake someone down like that. That's not what we'd want to do. You, uh, you don't talk to your brother. Do you ever talk about girls? Do you ever talk about anything? Life? No, he's... Uh, I mean, you, of course you talk to your family, but he's always been bigger than me, I guess. Shouldn't matter. Family's family. Well, maybe in other families. I know I can approach him about it, but I, I, how do you start? I can't walk up and, and say, uh, Hey, Elgin, have you kidnapped any kids recently? Just asking for a friend? No, of course not. It's just... Well, just see how what he thinks of the current situation. Let's let's try and just get his view on things, and uh, say what we've been doing. We've been helping out and looking for him, things. And uh, if he has any idea himself, let's start just innocently. Hmm. All right, I, I can do that. All right. You make your way to the blue belt. The, the exterior has changed quite a bit, and so has the interior, where the layout once was like any other pub in that era. Uh, a faucet bar, a wooden chairs, and a small kitchen that would whip up pies and stews, much like the Botanican. Um, it more looks like a modern bar now. The old mahogany floorboard have been replaced with like a black and white checkered linoleum. The bar, which once only displayed local beers and, and special occasions of wine, now had liquors, brandies, even soda water in all colors of the rainbow. The floor, which was once simple and open plan, has boots set up everywhere for intimate company. Uh, and by the wall, they even have a jukebox machine. For the two of you, this is quite the shock to the system because... You're not used to such modern and high-tech solutions. As you walk in, it doesn't take long before a light voice is heard from the back room. Father, you didn't tell me we were having any reservations. Oh no, I look like a right mess. And all of you recognize that this is the voice that belongs to Carolyn. Carolyn is by far the hottest commodity of the town. She's a beautiful young lady. She's not married. She refuses to marry any of the suitors that have ever asked her. Not only that, she's bright and she's funny and she's just everything that most guys in Hawken dreamed of. You walk in and you see that, you see that indeed Elkin is sitting at the bar. He's eating 
laughing as he hears Carolyn's voice in the background. Shouts something back to her he can't really make out. He doesn't really see who is walking in. He's just kind of focusing on his food. If approached, so the, so the uh, Carolyn is is coming towards us. You said. You can hear her voice. You can't see her. Ah, uh, then then no need to wave her off. I'm going to beeline for where Elgin is sitting. Uh, not with a particular sense of urgency, not running over to him, but I'm not going to wait to tell this woman that. Oh no no, I'm here to meet somebody. Elgin looks up. He's chewing his food. Hi. How can I help you? You don't go to places like this. I, mean, I have never seen you in a place like this before. <laughs> uh, well, I uh, I heard they'd made some changes. I had to see them for myself. Look, if you're after Carolyn, just forget about it. Okay. What? Uh, no, but... Uh, thanks for... Mm. Uh, no, I'm actually here about... Uh, What's been happening in town recently? I, you were at the, the meeting, I guess we'll call it. You you know that I've gotten wrapped into all this. I just wanted to know if you'd seen or heard anything. I know just as much as you. I came here a week before you. Uh, strange, weird things have been happening. I mean, man, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to eat. Why, why are you asking me this? The food good? I say, and I go and I sit down along the bar. He smiles as he sees you. He remembers he's had a few run-ins with you uh, when you were still a practicing police officer. Meh, meh, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's uh, not the same as the Britannic Inn, but uh, it's pretty good. You hungry, Corin? Yeah, I could eat. Uh, I can, I can grab something if you'd like. Carolyn now pokes her head out from one of the rooms in the back. She has a bobby pin in her mouth that immediately falls out when she sees who's come to visit. Goodness, it's you! Shortly after she walks over to you too and she has a big smile on her face. A smile that would make movie stars jealous. I didn't know we would have such fine company tonight. Her hair is neatly done in victory curls. A fashion directly from America, and she's wearing a light blue dress that complements her even blue eyes. She looks at you, and uh, both of you, smiles. Welcome back from the war. <sighs> I'm so glad to see you again. I try not to be immediately charmed by this absolutely lovely young woman, and uh, but I do try to put on my own little bit of charm that I very rarely bring out. And I say, Carolyn, you are still fighting off suitors? Oh, you know, it's life. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a businesswoman. I don't have time for love. It's a wise choice. Could we have two more of these, perhaps? Oh, uh, y- yes. Uh, my father will take care of it. So, what are you two doing in here? You never come in here. I, uh was feeling nostalgic and I wouldn't see uh, the old place but I can see it's been turned into something quite do you like what I've done don't you think it's just fabulous she puts out her arms and smiles I wanted to look like London I hated the way it looked like it was like any other pop but like look at it now we need we have new drinks we have to celebrate do you know a drink that's called the grasshopper it's completely green and it's very sweet, but it's, it's so in in London right now. I need to make it for you. She goes behind the bar and starts throwing out things. A little while after her father comes out, he looks tired and places two bowls of stew in front of the two of you. Carolyn, I told you not to chat up the guests too much. You have paperwork to do, he says, a little bit distracted. So, uh, what have you seen, Elgan? I mean, people say a lot, but have you seen anything out of order since the one week that you've been here? Uh, We were just getting to that. Uh, My brother says that there hasn't been that much of a change. And I'm hoping that the tone in my voice can convey that I might not believe him. Look, he puts a spoon down. I don't know anything other than what you know. 
I know that there's some weird stuff going on right now. Uh, children are missing. And it's death. It's bloody tragic. I thought I would be escaping that. After returning from the front lines, he looks over at Carolyn to see if she notices, notices him talking about being on the front lines. <sighs> so difficult, but... You know, I... I saved a handful of lives, and... Even though I couldn't save all of them, it made it all worth it, you know? Carolyn doesn't seem to notice him. <laughs> well, you seem to have eaten well, at least. Better than home. Yeah, I gained a few pounds here and there. It touches the shoulder. Any, um... Anyone else come home at the same time as you? Uh... A few. But, uh... Most of them are not in town right now. Most of them are visiting family around the area. Uh, let's see. No. Well, no one that could have caused this. Not that I believe. Well, at least they haven't been around to do it. So what's next now for the for the poster boy? Hmm. <laughs> what? What are you looking to? Uh, do you looking to stay and? And Halkin, or uh, find someone at last, someone you might want to settle down a bit more permanently with. Well, I'm trying here. He looks over at Carolyn. It's not easy. Uh, but, uh... Is this the only place you're trying? Well, she's the only one who's good enough, you know? Look at her. There's nothing beats that. I try to read him, if I can, maybe using psychology. Uh, if this is... Actually, if he's after this particular person, or if it's like, if he's still doing the game, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. That is a two under 40. You, again, your police officer abilities come into play here. You are used to interrogating people, you're used to reading them, you're used to telling if they're telling lies or not. And Elgin seems completely genuine. He is a very simple guy that only thinks about women and food. And that is exactly what is on his mind right now. He doesn't seem like he's trying to cover anything up. He just seems like he's trying to live his life. You're pretty convinced that he's telling the truth. Well, you talk around a fair bit. Do you know who would be uh, or have an interest in uh, Laurie? Laurie? Uh, an interest? Like a, a romantic interest, or...? Sure. No. Always close to her. Oh, well, her brother? Very close to her, he's very protective over her. Dean. Mm -hmm. Is his name. Uh, Dean. I haven't... I heard he was... He returned home actually quite a while ago. It's something about grenade shock or something, I don't... Oh. Was he uh, out as well then? Huh? He was out in the front. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he was exposed to some some real bad stuff. If you ask me, <laughs> grenade shock is it's the same as saying you don't have a spine. I uh, take a bit of stew, and I say it's quite good. What do you think, Corwin? I might have to come around here more often. Carolyn has now finished your weird-looking drinks. You've never drank anything that was green and thick. It doesn't look pleasant, but it smells pretty nice. So these are grasshoppers, and they are so delicious. I've been waiting so long to be able to introduce you all to, to all these new things. We're gonna transform Harkin. It's gonna be different now. It's The war is over, and things are just gonna be... Just swell. I look at it skeptically. Uh, I dive in enthusiastically, uh, not because I'm interested in the flavor, but so after I take that, do, do you drink them with a straw or do you pick them up? With a straw, let's say that. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to take a, like a nice long pull off the straw and then spend a half a second looking at Elgin and then look back at Carolyn and just gush. Oh my 
god, I, I didn't know the flavors could come like that. That is incredible. Right? That's what I'm trying to tell people. I don't want to taste it. And uh, what, what, what's in it? Uh, it's, she lists a whole list of ingredients. Elgin is looking over you at you very... You can tell that you're actually getting to him for once. You can tell that he's actually feeling a little bit threatened because he turned down his drink. And now you're showing enthusiasm for what she's doing. I, uh, wow, I mean, I can I imagine that uh, some men are a bit too old-fashioned to uh, to try something like that. Oh, you have no idea. I, I know this might be too much uh, to ask. Can you can you show me, like, how you make this? I, it looks so complicated. I lo- I'd love to know. Oh, really? You Okay, yeah, yeah. She starts going through the process. Elgin is looking increasingly frustrated. My face is growing grimmer and grimmer, and after a few more seconds, I slam down a bill on the bar, and uh, I just leave. There are two things that I I want to accomplish if I can get her to lead me away from the table. Uh, The first is to cast a look over to my brother and say, "I I don't worry, I'll be right back. But in doing so, see if I can steal a glance at his boots. Or his shoes, if, he, if he's wearing those boots. Your brother is currently not wearing those boots. He's not wearing his middle, his uniform or anything like that. He's just wearing normal shoes, yeah. And then the second thing, I'm trying to get a, a better vibe on Carolyn. Mm-hmm. Is her enthusiasm, like, legitimate uh, London philia or whatever you call it, do you have anything psychoanalysis? Uh, I have it at base. I can give it a shot. Uh, you, uh, do you have anything psychology? Uh, psychology's better, but not by much. Okay, make a psychology roll. Uh, no. Missed that by 40. Well, it seems pretty genuine. Uh, Karen has always been a bubbly, happy girl. Even during the war, she was just... Well, not that you would know, but she was very happy and seemed to be kind of the light of the town. She does, as she's mixing the drink, she does says, say, oh, There used to be this... Before you two came home. You know... You know Dean? He used to come in here a lot. He would never order much. He would order a pint. And then he would just sit in a stall by himself. And I always try to... You know, introducing to all of the drinks and, and all that, but he, he never wanted to. So I'm so happy that someone is finally showing enthusiasm for what I do. Oh, no, of course. Like I said, it's, it's amazing. And uh, I'm sure the, you know, with all the boys coming back, there'll be a, a huge appetite for this kind of thing. I, I would love to hear uh, more about your ideas. I, I mean, I have to go off with Burn, but maybe, I mean, could, could we meet after your, your whenever, when you, when you close up? Um, just to talk about it. I, I don't, I mean, I know that sounded very uh, untoward, but I, you know, I just, no, I, I'm genuinely interested in this. Mm, let me think about it. I'm a busy woman, as you know. She smiles at you, and she doesn't give you an answer. <laughs> oh, that's fine. I've been rejected before. Uh, has Burn uh, left left, or is he lurking outside yet? I'll be uh, standing outside the bar. Uh, well, I will make a polite uh, departure from the conversation with Carolyn and uh, go to meet Burn outside. Ah, no, I was... Like, I'm, I'm sorry about that. I, I There was just something off about her. I wanted to see if I could put my finger on it, but no luck. I just uh, stare at something in the distance. My brother, did he seem on the up and up to you? Your brother is a one-track mind. He's simple. He's not our, our guy. Hmm. Well, he did say there were others who came back. I'm sure you still have friends at the station, right? You could check those roles? Yes, but I want to see this Dean. Dean is interesting. Well, just for my peace of mind, I'm... I'd like to slip home... See if I can rifle through his things, just to fully eliminate my brother, because God, I, I couldn't handle that. If I can meet you back at the station, 
or wherever, but but just to make sure that there's nothing amiss at home. Is that okay? What are you going to look for? I, I mean, the, the, the boots are, are in my head, and if there's something off about them, I, I don't even know what I would find. I just have to make sure, you know? The rope stumps. Yes. Good. Do that. I'll, um... I'll go to the station and I'll check the lists. I'll catch up with you there. Okay, so now we're gonna go to Owen and Richard. You made your way to the tent again. Now, uh, Richard, I'm. I think it would probably be best if we're going to ask Laurie about her relationships if it comes from someone around more closer to her age. You know. No, I see what you mean, Father Owen. Uh, yes, I suppose it would be. More logical if I ask. Uh, again, I can ask it. <laughs> well, I don't know, actually. I, I'm not really into asking women about their relationships, either. Listen. I put my hand on his shoulder. You don't You don't just ask her. Hey, Laurie, are you seeing someone? You strike up a conversation. You ask how she's doing and... Uh, uh, whether she knows anything about what's going on. And then you make some reference to... Uh, do you have a... Do you have a man back home to protect you? Or something like that, you know? Do you have someone watching or watching your back? Something that shows a protective interest more than a flirtatious one. Yeah. I remember when I had to... When I first chatted up my Esther... Long, long time ago now, of course. Well, needless to say, that went all right. Uh, but you, you have to be a bit crafty with the way you use your words. You can't just come out and say things all the time. Because that, that doesn't... That's not always what they want to hear. Aye. No, Favaro, and I think you're making a lot of sense, actually. And I think to myself... And I feel quite comforted suddenly after everything that's happened today by Father Owen just giving me a pat on the shoulder. It amazes me how he always seems to know what to do. Like leading the town, he truly is an amazing man. And some of that confidence makes me feel a little better. And I say, no, you're right, Father Owen. I, I can, yes, let's just go in. Let's just say we're having a bit of lunch or something. And yeah, I, I think I can handle it. And then I really must check on Esther after we're done here. Oh no, of course, definitely, I understand. Okay. So, Richard, you go in alone. There is uh, a few people there. Um, it's lunchtime, so they're having uh, lunch and having a few beers, and there's a, there's a, a bustle going on. Yes, I'll make my way to the bar and attempt to just order some drink and food. Again, for a moment, my hand shakes a little... It's just hours ago now, since this morning, and poor, poor Anna, but no, I need to focus. I need to... I didn't have time to be lamenting when I was in the medic tent, and I don't have time to lament now, so let's focus on what's going on. And as I order the food, I'll be looking around, seeing if I can actually see if she's even here. I hope so. Mr. Pritchard um, receives your order, and uh, shortly after, a pie arrives. So... Did you enjoy the party? Oh, yes, Mr. Pritchard, I sure did. I sure did. Ah, yeah, I see you enjoyed the girls. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yes, well, only one, really, Mr. Pritchard, only one for me. Ah, you're one of those. You already settled for one, huh? Yes, yes, I have, actually, yes. So you gotta get a move on before someone snatches her up, if you know what I mean. Oh? Don't you think Rebecca has uh, got a lot of suitors? Oh, she's a pretty girl. She has a good head on her shoulders. Aye, that's true, that's true. Still, uh, things that have been happening lately are a little concerning. I, I worry about anyone who doesn't have anyone. Um, does, uh, Laurie, I, I noticed she was working the other night. Is she see someone at the moment? Laurie? No, she's too busy working. Oh, you don't say. Is she working here today? Ah, she's out in the back. I nod and then just take a sip of my drink and leave the conversation at that. But I'll eat a little, which I realise is actually quite good. I am hungry. And then I'll just kind of casually make my way to the back of the inn. And the back, you see that the back door's open. It's a nice day. 
and the sun is out and uh, Laurie is sitting there in the back, she's plucking chicken. Swearing a bit as she can't get all the feathers off it. Hey, uh, Laurie? Oh, uh, hi Richard. Hi. Haven't had a chance to talk to you at all at the party or anything. Well, no, I... Yes, I suppose I was a little busy, but uh, I figured I should be making the rounds with <laughs> everyone else in town. Um, How are you? Oh, you know, uh, keeping busy, uh, plucking chickens, <laughs> living the life, she says ironically. I kind of am distracted for a moment. This is more difficult than I thought it would be, but I, again, take a deep breath. Yeah... Say, you didn't happen to hear about what happened earlier today, did you? Oh, with Anna? Oh, who, who doesn't know by now? And the poor children? More of them are disappearing. It's horrible. I, I, but I know the police is doing the best. Hi. Well, would you believe it? I've actually got involved. I, I guess because I know a little bit about... Well, I mean, I was there this morning, so... Oh yeah, everyone is involved in some way. Uh, I guess our involvement is feeding those who are involved. Ah, yes, that's, a, I suppose, a way of putting it. You wouldn't, uh... The kids have been disappearing. Did, did you know any of them? Do you know anything about it? Mm, not more than you, I think. I mean, I, I'm just here. Uh, I know they disappeared. They were here last night, or they were in their house last night. That's what they say. Uh, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Clark and... You know, Callum has been gone for a while now, and you know, I haven't I haven't heard much other than that. Well, it's troubling, isn't it? I we've been seeing a few things already, and well, I know a lot of people are saying it's wild beasts, but between you and me, I'm wondering if it's not something more mundane, you know? <laughs> wild beasts? Yeah, I don't know about that. She's she's. Looking down at her chicken, and she doesn't seem like she wants to talk that much. She seems like she's a little troubled, actually, when you look at her. I'll take a seat nearby and sort of just wring my hands together. And as I do so, I say, Yeah, it's worrying. Um, You haven't had anything strange around your house, have you? you you've got someone looking out for you at the moment, right? Uh, you know, my, my and Pa are doing their best. <laughs> She seems more and more uncomfortable now that you're talking about her family. Part of me begins to feel rude and wishes to stop the conversation, but then I realize that at the end of the day I'm not actually here to talk about how she is. I feel guilty about that, but no, I need to know things, so I guess I'm going to have to try a little harder. So, funny thing though, uh, I take out the photo. I just hold it. Where did you get that from? I look at her carefully, and I simply say, We found this near the Clark's place. No. No, that's not true. I don't believe you. She plucks her chicken more aggressively. Well, hang on a minute, then. Help me out here. How else would I have this photo? I don't know. I don't know! Lori, it's... Calm down, it's, it's me. It's Richard. Come on, I'm not trying to grill you or anything. Why don't you try and make a persuasion roll? Yeah, it's 83. Uh, she clamps down now. She looks away from you. She looks at her chicken. I don't want to talk to you. I wrinkle my nose and then I let out an honest, sad sigh. And I say, I mean, you won't talk to me, Laurie. People like Bruin are going to be around here. I don't think you want to talk to him. Come on, why, what's it matter that who you gave this photo to? Okay, so now you're trying to intimidate her. So make an intimidation roll. 57. And what do you have in intimidation? 15. Look, if you don't leave now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that, I'm gonna say that you, you, you touched me. Inappropriately. I immediately stumble back quite anxious suddenly, looking around, and then I simply say, What? But... Lori, why are you being like this? What? I wouldn't... Never! I don't want to talk about it, okay? Well, you're gonna have to. Fine, I'm going, I'm going, but Burns gonna come for you. We found it in the house. 
It's in the I house. Why you. would this be inside the house? No. It's under the children's no, beds. You, no, you didn't. You didn't. Please leave. Leave me alone. <sighs> and I begin leaving, shaking my head. Damn it. Damn it. She knows. How can she know? She's involved. How? That doesn't make any sense. But she has to be. The way she's acting, she has to be. Damn it. Damn it. And I just stumble, muttering apologies as I walk away. All right. Owen. You return home. It's a little after midday. And Esther is sitting in the garden. Which is a pleasant surprise. She isn't cooped up inside. She is... Not doing anything other than just sitting there, though. She smiles as she sees you. Uh, it's been a long day, and I don't even think it's uh, terribly far into the afternoon yet, is it, Esther? No, no, not yet. I'm, I could make us tea. Do you want some tea? Oh, that would be lovely, love. Uh, have you... did you hear... What happened in town today? Oh, I did, but I've forgotten now. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. You've, you've forgotten what, what happened? I just slipped my mind. I, I know that it was terrible, but was it, was it the accident with, with the children at the lake? No, no, it wasn't that. Uh, what, what? What accident is are you are you, uh, are you talking about, Esther? Oh, you know with the, the school trip, but no, that was that was in summer. That's, that's not now. Oh. What what happened to the children in the summer? Oh, you don't you don't know. Oh, it's a long time. Well, I guess it is. No, I'm I'm just talking about things that happened a long time ago. Now I'm mixing it all up. Uh, you don't. You remember, Esther. Esther, listen. I. It's been a very long day, and some very bad things have happened, and I think they've happened to some children. So, so if something else has happened while I've been gone, in town, like I don't remember a a school trip going wrong at the at the lake. Was this when I was here? I don't. Was this? Oh no, you. It must have been before the war, because you you were here. It's a long time ago now, but don't you remember when they... They were... When they were... Sailing on the lake, but, and they couldn't get back in it. And... The teacher was trying her hardest to get them back inside, and she couldn't. And, and then... And then she ran all the way here and, and asked if you could come help. And you don't remember? Do I remember any of this? Yeah, you remember now. But it this is years ago. Oh. Esther, that's like 20 years ago. I was still a young man back then. Oh, silly me. Of course it was, I, I... No, No, they shouldn't have taken a boat out on that lake. More of a quarry than a lake. Oh, but Owen, do you remember how you helped them? I felt so in love with you when that happened. <laughs> I remember. I remember all of that. Oh, Esther. You've always been such a treasure for this town. You know? What would they have done without you? I don't know. I'm feeling like a... Uh, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm not the man I was. That's for bloody sure. Oh, Esther gets up. And she walks over to you and... She corrects the color of your shirt, like she always does, in a reassuring way, and puts a hand on your chest. You know, you know you will always be all the man that I need. You know I've always told you that. You know you'll always be all the man that, that the church needs. And, and all the young people who seek guidance can always come to you. Oh... I always know what to say to perk my mood up. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Mm. How about that cup of tea then? Yes, let me go make it. Put uh, put the pot on. I think uh, I think I could do with a couple of drinks. Oh, uh, brandy? No, 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 no. A pot of tea. Put the pot of tea on. I uh, think I'll. Um, I want to 
be drinking through the afternoon. I don't want to waste a whole lot of leaves just for one mug. Esther walks into the house and starts brewing tea. I sit in the garden, still overgrown. A sad mess, considering how Esther used to keep it, but it still puts me somewhat at ease, brings me a level of peace, because this is home. My house is behind me. My wife is looking after me, even though it's becoming increasingly apparent that she needs looking after. Why are you thinking that things that happened 20 years ago were only happening yesterday, Esther? That's not right. wonder if it's got something to do with all of this going on. Hmm. And I'm thinking back to how soldiers would lose parts of their memory if they were exposed to traumas. That sometimes they would get them back, sometimes they wouldn't. Selective amnesia is what some of the doctors called it. Like they were blocking out entire parts of their mind. I wonder what Esther's blocking out. Because no matter what is going on in Owen's head right now, the one thing he's not prepared to accept yet is that she has some kind of degenerative brain disease. It's all got to be tied together, as far as he's concerned. He's been waiting now for ten minutes, and there's still no sign of tea. Hey, Esther, where have you got to with that bloody tea? India? Oh! Tea! Yes, uh, one moment. She's clearly not started making any tea. But you can hear her starting in the kitchen. I will go in to accompany her and make sure she doesn't drift off again. I'm beginning to realise she is going to need this kind of supervision more and more. Uh, Esther? Yes, darling? Don't, don't, don't worry if you, if you can't remember... Uh, it's it's not not that important, but um, you know you mentioned the children and the lake and all of that. Yes. Have you heard anything about um, other children going missing oh. from Halkin? Oh. Or seen anything? Seen? And I, I'm like I said, don't stress over it. But if you can just close your eyes a minute and just think. Did you, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Something that's uh, people behaving in an unusual way around town? Just have a think. I'm thinking of an, uh, so many, so many memories to keep track of. Uh, mm, I, I do believe that we, we keep our young ones safe. Really, nothing bad happens to them. Uh, that young boy, Callum, he disappeared. I remember that. I believe it was... It's been a, a week now. My poor parents have passed away. And now... It was Anna. It was Anna that... Oh, no. And how you remember you told me earlier, the entire family is gone. That's tragic. The entire bloodline. Oh my goodness. She, Esther sits down in a chair. She's clearly overwhelmed by, again, remembering what you told her or what has been told to her earlier today. I give her a hug from behind as she sat there. It's all right, love. You don't need to remember any more. Oh, Corwin. What is happening to all the poor kids? I don't know, love. There's something strange going on, though. And it doesn't look like anyone's doing a bloody thing about it. That's a worrying thing. The town has been... It's been odd, Corwin. Yeah, I bet it has. It's been lights. Weird lights. Where were the lights coming from? From the mountains, Owen. Lights from the mountains. You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying, where we played the campaign The Whispers of the Mountains for Call of Cthulhu 7th Edition. 
The Whispers of the Mountains was written by Clara Herbel, who was also our keeper. We were joined by Aaron Hammonds from Queen's Court Games, as well as Matthew Dawkins. The music is from the Cthulhu, Nyarnathotep, Yogsothoth, Shabnegarath, and Asatoth compilations made by our friends at Cryochamber, as well as the Paleowolf album Genesis. Check them all out at cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more music for your gaming table. We'd like to give massive thanks to our Champions of the Red Moon, Martin Hoyshobert, Nastasha Rollerson, Simon Cooper, David, Julia, Camilla, Ludwig Manford, Bob DeLang, and Julian for their generous support. And we would, of course, also like to thank all of our other patrons. Without your support, the show would not be possible. If you want to support our work, please check us out on Patreon. You can get access to bonus campaigns for Cult of Indie Lost and Coriolis there, as well as get early and raw access to all of our recordings. You can also hear your name right on the show as a champion of the Red Moon, as well as play Cult with us. Most importantly, that support is what keeps the show going, so do check us out there. Thank you again for listening. And remember, that is not dead, which can eternal lie. And with strange eons, even death may die.